everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org. And this is theCUBE, where we extract the signal from the noise, we go to the events, and we share with you our audience what's happening at the shows. We're here at IBM Edge. We've been here for two days. We're at the Mandalay Bay in, in Las Vegas. Carrie Kiley is here. She's the Director of Marketing at Arrow, uh, which is a sponsor of Edge. Carrie, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That's yeah, good, good to, to see here. you. This is, you guys are a big sponsor. That's, uh, yes, we that's are. awesome. Thanks Thank for you. noticing. Appreciate that. Uh, you got some good shout outs today. So, so what do you think of the event? What's, what's happening here? What's the buzz? Um, well, talked to a lot of partners today, a lot of uh, folks from, uh, from Arrow actually. We have a great showing, uh, probably about 45, 50 people from Arrow here, and everybody's really excited. We were a little nervous coming into it. It's so big, there's so much to see and do. Um, so uh, we, we were a little worried about getting lost in the mix, but it's been great. Yeah, it's been so great. quite the opposite actually. Ar Arrow is sure. a, you know, just an awesome business model. Uh, it's evolved you. You know, over the you know, many years. We've watched Arrow you know, from the, 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 the PC days you know, really yeah. grow up and of course a lot of action in the enterprise. So, so talk about Arrow's business a little bit and where you fit. Sure, thanks. Um, so we are a premier distributor for IBM, uh, and we are focused um, primarily today on five different solution areas um, to help our business partners capture the, um, the growing uh, markets. Uh, data center convergence, security, um, mobility, and uh, those types of solutions. So um, we focus on enablement, uh, lead generation, uh, sales support, and uh, financing support for all of our partners to enable them to uh, uh, expand their reach and depth into the market as well as ge geographies and that. Yeah, so you mentioned mobile. I mean, it's just incredible to see how you know, the consumerization of technology is really driving decisions, right? It used to be the enterprise was sort of the most advanced and now it's, you know, Apple's driving everything it seems. But So you also mentioned data center convergence. What's, mm -hmm. what's that initiative all about? Um, yeah, thanks for asking. That's actually an initiative that we have um, seen um, really uh, emerge as um, a results-oriented architecture. Instead of really looking at the products um, as great as they are and working uh, towards a result, we're hearing about what our uh, end user customers through our partners, what they need, what they're looking for in terms of staying competitive in the market and working backwards into technologies and solutions and allowing our uh, enablement strategies to reach our partner sellers uh, with that in mind so that they're approaching their customers in a in a different way. So um, that's what that program is about. So let's talk a little bit about the, the cloud. You know, everybody talks about the cloud and how disruptive it is and <laughs> how it's going to cha gonna change the channel. And, and, and then you've got sort of different partners, I'm sure, that are embracing that. Others that are sort of, you know, going in with dig digging their heels in. What are you seeing in terms of what's happening in the cloud? How are you guys responding to it? How are your partners responding to it? Um, well, uh, it was a lot more mysterious, I think, um, last year than it is this year. I think people are really embracing it, again, uh, really from a results-oriented um, way. Instead of looking at it as something that's new, um, people are looking at it as a route to market. It's not a, a different thing or a product, it's a route to market. And I think that uh, our partners and uh, in, in customers are embracing it as such and learning um, how um, deploying certain uh, solutions and methodologies and, and business practices through the cloud can help not just save money, but make money, become more competitive in the marketplace. And I really think that's resonating more so, um, you know, in the last, I'd say, eight months um, than it was uh, in early part of last year. And, and are the companies that you typically, you know, work with, sell through, how are they transforming themselves to take advantage of, of that trend? The partners? Yes. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, um, it, it, it is a different selling approach and it is a different um, uh, really approach for the sellers to go into their partners and, and look at workloads and specific um, 
competitive um, initiatives that an a end user might have. And so I think that um, the difference today is they're selling um, you know, uh, a, a bit of an insurance policy or, or uh, something that is viewed more as an annuity. Uh, than just a point product sale and you know kind of go on to the next. Uh, so I think it's a something that uh, partner sellers understand now is a relationship builder as much as it is just a selling tool. Has it affected the way in which you you market this whole cloud trend? Um, it has a bit in that um, we're much more focused in a lot of cases uh, in, um, again, results-oriented uh, selling rather than product point product-oriented selling uh, and um, in, enable, in terms of enablement, focusing on different ways of selling uh, rather than, again, uh, the approach of, uh, you know, maybe a procurement officer or an IT um, director um, sometimes going up uh, the chain a little bit to CFOs, CMOs. All right, so let's let's stay on marketing a little bit. I, I, in your role as director of marketing, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how marketing has changed. Uh, I mean, we're, we hear so much about cloud and social and mobile mm -hmm. and big data. Mm -hmm. We hear the CMO is going to outspend the the yeah, CIO yeah. in terms of technology. How has marketing changed in the last you know five or seven years? Well, Facebook and LinkedIn and all of those um, great tools have changed um, the way that we market immensely. Not just market, but how we find talented people to work for us and, and through us. So um, it, it has changed um, the landscape quite a bit. Not to say that the traditional means of marketing, whether they be outbound telemarketing or, or mail even, um, uh, is going away, but, there, but the social element uh, of marketing has changed the way um, that we uh, shape our relationship with our customers and stay with them throughout the buying cycle. So many customers today are making so many decisions on the web without any people around or any mail or any, uh, any phone calls. So uh, it's intensely important now for us to help our partners be um, visible and relevant out on the internet and the web. And social, is a, you know, social media is a great way to get them into that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when customers are, have made a buying decision or are ready to buy, they're, they're so much more informed than they were, say, Very much say so. 10 years ago. So that Absolutely. somewhat changes the way in which you have to in, in, engage with them. So, so how do you engage differently with customers? Um, how do you make those engagements a source of value? Yeah. Um, well, uh, at, at every possible turn, you know, a lot of times we think of the sales cycle, again, beginning with, um, you know, say, an appointment. And so, because we know that um, we may not get the appointment <laughs> um, because so many of these customers are, are looking at uh, different um, you know thought leaders and things like that on the web um, we have uh, helped our partners understand search engine op optimization um, landing sites um, multi-touch marketing strategies and again starting at the enablement phase if you're doing a training session involve your customers educate your customers on solutions and results oriented uh, solution so that um, you know it is some place that um, that a partner can go to get thought leadership and they're going to think of that partner uh, much more readily because they understand them as a thought leader. We were talking to Tom Rosamilia earlier and he brought up the whole theme of uh, you know marketing to the individual uh, you know fingerprint of that individual whether it's there I didn't mm -hmm. hear his keynote but evidently this was a major theme mm -hmm. of it because we were here of course on the cube but uh, he was talking about hey, look everybody leaves a, a social footprint Absolutely. a digital footprint and it's mm -hmm. unique to that individual um, you obviously see that how, how but it's got to be hard to capitalize on that because you're it's it's a it's a mind shift it's, uh, a mindset shift it's uh, there's the technology involvement there's content um, how have you experimented with that, and what, what, what successes have you had? What, yeah, we what, what have. I, I, I would love to spout out all kinds of wonderful statistics yeah. for you, but we're pro probably in the uh, early adoption mm -hmm. phase of, of being able to capture um, our re actual return on a lot of that. But um, but there are tons and tons of tools and, and great advisors actually within the IBM Corporation that we've utilized um, to make sure that we do capture as much of that um, digital footprint or fingerprint. Um, now with the, the tablets, it's the fingerprint. Um, and um, so we use several different uh, tools to do that. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, by the end of this year, I would think we'll be able to have um, specific statistics. Are, are you are you starting to, well, how, I, I know you are, but how are you using data 
in, in your marketing? How has that changed? Uh, immensely. So um, not just our own data that we're collecting uh, from a point of sale standpoint, but um, you know, how many times has a, a partner um, been frustrated? They feel like they're buying the same lists every time they go to a you know a different marketing campaign. Um, so we have actually a. Um, a tool called Arrow Insight that we use uh, that combines uh, market insight through um, IDC Black Book and uh, our own point of sale data as well as DNB um, data so that we can look at where our partners have sold, uh, where the market is going, and then look at specific white space areas where we may not have uh, hit a particular uh, segment of the market with a particular solution. So uh, we use uh, data really as king and are um, you know, constantly feeding that database and that tool uh, like a living, breathing thing. So it's changed immensely. So that's trying to understand, the database of that is trying to understand the, the, the total market, mm -hmm. how much you get, can be penetrated by different product segments, exactly. uh, maybe even by different industries. Or Absolutely, you, yeah. yeah it, it actually takes a look at uh, industry, geography, uh, solution type, um, you know, you, you name it, it's, it's a, it's a um, pretty complex um, methodology, actually. Do you have a data scientist on staff? Or? We do, we have yeah. two. Really? Yes, and I'm becoming one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Relatively new roles, or? Um, yeah, relatively, I'd say within the last uh, two and a half years, uh, relatively new. Uh, we work uh, with our partners with custom engagements, and we also have this tool available for subscription as well. So partners, if they uh, become scientists themselves, can actually tap into the tool and, and work with it So it's themselves. a collaborative model there. Absolutely. What kind of skill sets do you look for in a, in a person like that? Are they like data hackers? Are they math whizzes, stat jockeys? Are they programmers? Um, you know, a little bit of all of that, to be honest with you. Um, and, and I'm really in awe of, of the way that they do look at data as, as again, um, you know, a cube almost. You know, they, they're, they're picking up different ways to look at it um, in terms of presenting dashboards, not just data, not just spreadsheets, but dashboards to, to make decisions off of data rather than just pivot tables. Yeah, right. Okay, my last question is, um, what do you want from the vendor community? What do you look for from a from a supplier, you know, like IBM, you know, generally or IBM specifically? What can they do to make your life better and make your clients' lives more productive? Um, you know, I'll, I'll answer that from a marketing perspective first, and maybe uh, widen it after. Um, I've worked with IBM for quite some time, about 25 years actually, since the beginning of my career. And uh, from a marketing perspective, IBM is a fantastic partner, but they are very collaborative and um, share a lot of, again, market data and also, um, you know, where the market's going, but also um, some field uh, hands-on expertise uh, to help us and our partners. Um, in general, so that's from a marketing perspective. Um, in, in general, um, IBM is a great company to work for, not just because of the technology and the solutions, but uh, the field support. Um, you know, uh, to compete with uh, uh, the other guys, you really have to have some selling feet on the streets, and I think that that's one of the, the main things that we look for in a supplier. Awesome. All right, Carrie, well, listen, thanks very much for coming inside thanks the Cube, sharing the Arrow story. Really, thanks. pleasure meeting you. Good to be here. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Keep it right there. We're right back with our next guest. This is the Cube live from the Mandalay Bay. We're at Edge.